Hello everyone, and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. This is episode 25. Last time, we finished off our Orzammar rounds. We declared a new king. Uh, we got to the uh, Anvil of the Void with this lovely party, which was a great choice, great party, great story moments, and Balin has been crowned king, and Haramont has been uh, immediately executed. Uh, we are going to be leaving Orzammar now as we've, uh, we've completed, we've completed, uh, what we, what we need to do here. Did I not interact with this before? Oh, this is another thing from the Shaper's life. Oh, because it was, we had to do the blessing of the, the Shaper at giving the path of those who walk with the stone. And we've been getting all of these. You have walked the path of the Shaper and documented the stone. The blessing of the Shaper is yours to wield in the carving of a new path. One for tomorrow's Shaper to follow. We got an item too. Oh, we got a mace. Shaper its blessing. A weapon of exceptional quality, even by dwarven standards. Given as confirmation, the bearer has walked the path of the Shaper. Not bad. There you go. We're, a, we're definitely a dagger wielder. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we. Yeah, I don't know. We don't really. We don't really do maces. We don't really do maces over here. But there's some cool stuff, nonetheless. Uh, let's improve your chance to hit a little bit at the very least. Let's put dexterity up to twenty. What should we do? What should we do? Um. Because. Ogren's not really a tank, so him doing like taunting and threatening and stuff like that is probably not like the best thing for him because he's supposed to just be laying into enemies but not taking the brunt of the damage. Like, so it's good that we even have him with Shale because Shale can be the tank and then Ogren can just go berserk on him, which is really cool. So I think we'll end up kind of almost focusing on these Berserker and Reaver stats. Frightening appearance uh, focuses the Reaver's unsettling countenance into a weapon, making a target cower in fear unless it passes a mental resistance check. And it increases this, it, it, it increases the effectiveness of taunt and threaten, which what I was just talking about. Having him do taunt and threaten is probably not a good idea because he's not built to take all of the damage. Maybe we'll go for... Maybe we go for two-handed sweep. Because he tends to get surrounded instead. Uh, awesome. Okay. Perfect. That's our level up. Uh, we were able to interact with that, get some more codex. And we're going to leave. We're going to leave Orzammar. I don't think that there's anything else for us to do here. We cleaned it out. Uh, which was which was very nice. Um, so I th I, th I think we're just going to be moving into uh, the uh, Ban Lawrence lands. Uh, firstly, we are going to um, firstly we are going to head back to the party camp because everybody needs to be spoken to. We need to just delve into some people. Ogren has not had a proper dialogue dive yet. We've only spoken to him on a more of a surface level. News of the hour. Lord Balin victorious. Lord Harrowmont arrested and ridiculed in the streets. Damn. Um, oh, I wonder if, do these guys have any updates? Another generation of Idukans takes the throne. Thanks to you. So I hear we have you to thank for putting a new Idukan on the throne. How is the surface managing without you? There you go. All right, so pe people do have things to say about the changes. Which is, which is cool. I would not have voted for Balin, but I trust my mother's judgment. He may be just what Orzammar needs in these modern times. In these modern times, okay. Well, I see what sort of company you've taken up. And this is the guy that Ogren was fighting with before, and he actually makes a comment on it with Ogren in our party. That's a neat detail too. I believe... Uh, every nug that we've ever encountered has been found. My nug wrangling friend. So, pretty sure that's all done. Uh, we're at we're out of here. Uh, there were some unofficial fights to take uh, to take in the proving, actually. Occasionally refer to Alistair as a little pike twirler. 
Why, is a little pike twirler taking offense? <laughs> it's just a curious description. Curious? <laughs> ah, it's entirely true. What, you haven't seen him twirling his bike? Goes at it when he thinks no one's watching. <laughs> Knocks about in the trees like there's no tomorrow. Caught him just the other day. Blushed all the way down to his navel. Then couldn't find his shirt. I swear he's gonna hurt himself one of these days. The way he works that thing. I don't want to hear this anymore, do I? I keep telling him pikes are for sticking things at long range, I horses and such. Not for twirling like a sissy girl. Wait, you're talking about an actual pike? Like a spear? Obviously. What else would I be talking about? I can't imagine. <sighs> Bruh. Ogren and Alistair have gotten to know each other off screen, apparently. That's obviously why they're able to talk. Uh, can we do the unofficial proving things after everything's been said and done? I kind of forgot about that. Uh, there's a dude around here that was like, wanna do proving fights? And we were like, maybe later. Um, and then we just didn't. This guy. Ready for some unofficial training opportunities? Yeah, um, yeah, I'll, I'll look into this before we leave. Otherwise, I would never come back, most likely. And then party camp, Ben Lawrence lands, whatever we can do. Um, so let's have a look. Set me up with a team battle. We've got some young fighters ready to go. This will be difficult, I assure you. Oh my god, we are just thrown right in. A blood mage. All right. A blood mage. Enemies ahead. <laughs> Get overwhelmed. Well, that blood mage is dead. I don't know what to tell you. That blood mage is dead. There ain't no more blood mage. Let me tell you that much. No quarter shall be given. No quarter shall be given. Skull pumper. Damn you. Damn, Shale's getting annihilated, actually. Oh, I've got uh, heroic defense now, too. Oh. These proving fighters are strong. They are strong indeed. Confirmed. For the fools, man. All right, Shadow just got knocked down. I thought <laughs> Shadow got killed for a second there. Oh, we. Ah. That nice, unofficial fight. Good job, Warden. You've earned a portion of the receipts. Let me know if you want to go again. All right, I'm assuming that there is like a limited amount of these to do, but we get we get stuff and it throws us right in. No fanfare. Set me up with a team battle. Oh, I'm composed of solid rock. Yes. You've taught our fighters some value. Ooh. Classes. It will take some nice. time before they are ready to challenge you again. Take this with my thanks. Cool. Okay. So you you there is a limited amount of fights. It's just all just a group of people to fight, and then you get a blood ring. Restriction to a blood mage, though. Images of dragons adorn this ring. Anyone who wears it gets the nagging sensation that someone is whispering nearby, just a little too softly to make out. It's the one ring. My inventory, once again, maxed out. The blood ring. There are clear signs that this ring was made in the Tevinta Imperium. It's covered in dragon motifs, for one thing, and it gives anyone who wears it a slightly uneasy feeling for another. But beyond that, very little is known about it. Warriors of House Ivo took this ring in the Blessed Age from the hand of a madman, a surfacer mage who had wandered into the underground and attacked Lyrian miners near Orzammar. From there, the ring changed hands many times until its history had been lost and the dwarves no longer remembered how it had ever come into their lands. Cool. Nice. Those are the unofficial proving fights, which I just skipped through because they're all the same. And we got our reward. Uh, let's get out of uh, Orzammar and head back to the party camp. So, I have a question for you, dwarf. Oh, <laughs> sounds like you're passing a stone there. <laughs> get it? Passing a stone? I do get it, yes. 
My question is this. Had the Anvil of the Void not been destroyed, does it believe the Dwarves would have used it? You mean to create more golems? Oh yes. Faster than you could squish a nug. Even knowing the agony that it caused, they would still inflict it on others? No need to inflict it. There'd be plenty ready and willing to sign up, just as you did. There's fewer and fewer of us each year, and the Darkspawn never run out. If it meant saving Orzammar, there'd be plenty who'd become a golem, sure. Does it think it was wrong to destroy the Anvil, then? <sighs> no. Sometimes people need to be kept from doing stupid things, even for good reasons. It is referring to its former wife? <laughs> I think some statues should sod off and ask their sodded questions to someone else. <laughs> nice. Give me a moment. Oh, yeah. He's leaving Orzammar, right? So this will have some crucial weight. Sure, take your time. Why the stone? I feel like I'm about to fall off the world with all that sky up there. You never really get over that feeling. Sodding fabulous. <laughs> It'll be like... Being drunk all the time, but without spending all that time actually swallowing. Eh, nothing over your head. At all. Just any time a great sodding big bird can fly overhead and take you away. <laughs> you people are mad out here. That's all I'm saying. Well, let's get moving. We're losing, what you call it, daylight. <laughs> cool. All right, uh, we are out. We can now fast travel to the party camp. Okay, look at this crew that I've got here. Ah, we've got emissary Fellhammer. We have we have dwarves. Orzammar has sent her best warden. It has been a long time since the dwarven army has marched on the surface. Do you need anything? Outfitting any army on short notice, there's always room for more gear. Gems would serve the most utility. The middle stone, sapphires and the like. We're dealing with many smaller foundries and larger values might overwhelm. Oh. Donate gems, eh? I shall do it. Turn in gems for the dwarves. Your pack jingles with precious gems. Okay, sapphires, malachites and topazes. Ooh. I don't think we've sold any of these. Um, so I've got a bunch in my inventory and my storage chest, I'm pretty sure as well. That's, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. So they actually have value, um, like a story value. That's good to know. Okay. And we, uh, we've got coins and runes for the circle. Um, all unassigned journeyman. Oh, journeyman runes are the lower tier ones. Are they not? I will. I need to do some stuff anyway because I need to redo some weapons on my main character. I need to redo a bunch of stuff, um, and I'm going to do that now. Then I will consider turning things in. Then we will talk to everybody. Okay. I'm ready to do party camp talk now. Uh, I've finished everything in the in the camp. It is a brand new day because the EA app had issues and it's been having a lot of issues lately. So I wasn't able to launch the game. It, it kicked me out of the game and I was not able to play it. Uh, so I had to come back later and we're ready for party camp time. So what I've done is we've got the crow dragger, crow dragger. I read <laughs> dragon bone and said dragger, co Crow Dagger Dragonbone is how you say that. So it has three uh, enchantment slots. So we're doing physical resistance with a chance of paralysis. And then we're also doing a chance to reduce movement speed with physical resistance as well on these two, which I feel is pretty good. Um, Ogren can wield the Legion of the Dead armor. So something a bit more fitting for, for Ogren now. Still with the Ageless, 
against Darkspawn, but I'm thinking that we'll probably uh, we'll probably do something else uh, at some at some point in terms of weaponry. I might even like swap him with uh, what Sten has, but we've given Sten back the Blood Dragon armor, so uh, we might give Yasaris potentially give Yasaris to uh, to Ogren as well. We'll see how we go. Uh, Liliana's got the the spear thrower bow that we picked up. Uh, in the Deep Roads. Uh, Alistair hasn't ne needed any changes. Morrigan hasn't needed any changes. Uh, Zev also, you know, because what, what we'll probably most likely end up doing is if I include any of those people in my team, I'll be able to kind of swap out accessories and, and, and stuff like that, which is pretty good. Uh, I've also bought the Tome of Arcane Technique and Physical Technique from our lovely merchant, uh, Bowden. I'm not sure who I want to give them to. I will probably do physical technique for for my character. And then arcane technique, we're really focusing on, we're really kind of honing in on Wynn instead of uh, instead of Morrigan as our, as our mage for the party. Um, so we might just continue to continue to do so. So let's do, let's use Tome of Physical Technique for me and then win Tome of Arcane. Oh, can't use it. Interesting. Oh, none of them can. Maybe I have to use one at a time. One at a time, maybe? No, maybe I can only do it on other characters if they're uh, actually in the party. That might make sense. Now, Bowden does have uh, the Templar and I think the Ranger books to to learn about specializations. I think I want to be a duelist, so I'm not sure where to find that yet. So I still gotta, I'll still have to figure that one out. Now, in terms of our talents, we can go for Feast of the Fallen, which is thriving on the moment of death. Stamina is partially restored when we fell an opponent with a backstab, and that's hap that happens pretty frequently. That happens pretty frequently. That might be a good one. So I think we're going to do that because that's just a nice little passive ability. So we're going to max out our assassin tree, which feels good. Yes. Yeah, if I put together a party, <laughs> if I put together a party, um, it kicks me out immediately. Hello. It, 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 hello. It won't let me have a party in there. But there you go. Now I can use it. And then for win, we can go, I'm going to just put that right into haste. So the party with speed, allowing them to move and attack significantly faster. Now the spell does impose a small penalty to attack and drains mana rapidly while in combat. So we'll, we'll see, but it, it looks like it'll be a, a, a fun one. Won't it just be just a fun time? Um, I wonder how this will change. If we start putting stuff like supporter in there. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how we go. But that's that. Get me back to the party camp. It's time to engage in dialogue. It's time to talk to all the people we've got so far. So we're going to debrief with the, the team that we've taken into the deep roads first. And then we'll branch out to everybody else and check in with them. Let's speak and get to know Ogren. There you are. Wanted to talk to you. What about? You and I, we've... You know how sometimes you spend time with people and things. Hmm. I love you too, Ogren. I, uh, what? Keep your hands where I can see them. Uh, sheesh. Can a man address a friend without getting all weird? I was just asking a favor. You had to go all that on me. A favor? What is it? I was thinking. Uh, I do know some people out here on the surface. A person, actually. A girl I knew in Orzammar. Before I left, obviously. Okay. A girl you knew or a girl you... 
new. What? Oh, you mean were we rutting? <laughs> oh, I. After Bronca left for the deep roads, name's Felsey. She was a fiery one. I'm sure she's forgiven me by now. Thought maybe I'd track her down, see how she's been living. Okay. Um, what is she doing on the surface? What? Why are you asking me? I didn't do anything. I tried to look her up the last time we were at Lake Kalanhod. She wasn't at work at the inn. At home with her sick mother, they said. I figured it was just the ancestors telling me something. But I keep thinking about her. Um, did we... Actually, that's a good point. I don't even remember if we if we did this, because he's saying when we were lost at Lake Kalanhad, and there's something, actually, that I haven't even thought about. But did we... We left... We left Ozmar briefly to get some fresh air, and I had to do some stuff. Did we... And I took... I took Ogren... I took Ogren with me. So we did actually go to Kalanhad. We did go to the Circle Tower. That's a funny little slip up almost is you're allowed to leave Orzammar with Ogren in your party but then Ogren makes a big deal of leaving Orzammar when you're finished with the king and you and you walk out of there that's I've never even hadn't even considered that it would have been interesting if they had a thing where where if you go to leave Orzammar with Ogren in your party he's like I can't, I can't go yet. I'm not ready to go yet because we have to do this thing. It makes me wonder if they, they should have had like maybe a story point. It's, they write themselves into a corner at that point, don't they? Because you have a character with the, with the dwarven culture who, uh, you know, it's a very specific act to leave Orzammar, turn your back on the stone. And Ogren joins our party when we're in the middle of our Deep Roads adventure, which means he's automatically added to the party camp. Like, we can take him out of Orzammar, all of this kind of stuff. Um, it makes me wonder if they didn't really have the capability or maybe they didn't just like connect all of that together to maybe have it so Ogren can't leave Orzammar and can't be in the party camp until you're done in Orzammar. So then when he actually leaves and he's talking about the sky and he's like, oh God, I need to adjust. It makes a bit more sense because that just clicked for me. I went, wait a minute, we've taken Ogren out of Orzammar already to go and do some things. So that's that's quite funny. Uh, but what I like about that is he's obviously talking about, oh, when we were last at Kalanhad, uh, we were looking this up and we, we did go there. So it, it from a story perspective, he's not just randomly saying something that didn't happen. You can't have it every way, I suppose. It can't can't be perfect. But um, yeah, I just, I just didn't even think about that until right now. And I was like, Quite, quite strange, actually, that you can just take him out of, uh, take him out of Orzmar, and he doesn't comment on it until you finish the quest line. Okay. There's something here you're not telling me. Ah, you suspicious sack of pebbles. You always have to think the worst of someone. And here I thought we were friends. Ah, you whipped out the knife, didn't you? Look, Felsey and me, we didn't leave things on the best of terms. Go on. Yeah, she was jealous of Bronca. Then she got to be controlling, and Ogren was meant to be free, you know what I mean? Anyway, she couldn't handle everyone wishing they could be with me. So she left. Honest truth. I don't believe you. I'll wait and hear her version of this and Nugspew. Nugspew. Well, it's my side of the story. I don't give sod all what you believe. So, are we doing this or not? We'll find her. Well, and a good friend you are, Warden. I'll think about you if we ever... <laughs> uh, no, actually, that would be gross. Uh, what was it you wanted to say? God, I love this dude. I'd like to know more about you. What about? Are you sure you're fine with what happened with Bronca? Oh, sure. I'm fine with it. I mean, she was a real firebrand between the sheets, but a bit soft in the skull, you know what I mean? Explains why she left anyway. So you're not broken up over it? 
I swear to the stone, the next time someone asks me that, I'll write my name in bruises on their ass. Ancestors, take me. You people whine like tea kettles around here. <laughs> Ogren's old flame. I, uh, given how that conversation went, a disapproval of minus two is probably the best outcome. Look up Felsey near Lake Callanhad. Uh, Ogren has told you about an old friend called Felsey who left for the surface about a year ago. Ogren and Felsey did not part on good terms. Now that he's on the surface, he wants to look her up to see if she has forgiven him. She lives near Lake Callanhad. Come to talk to old Ogren, have you? Don't know why. What's wrong, Ogren? Nothing. I'm fine. Just, uh, I got a hornet in my eye is all. Did you want to talk about something? I'd like to know more about you. What about? How do you like the surface? It's sodding great. At first I was a little queasy with all that air, but there's just so much of it. No one has any idea who you are or what you're doing. And the ale. Oh, who'd have thought? Ale made with grain. <laughs> Aye, the surface is great. It's like a big, bright world of filth without a ceiling. My kind of place. Hey, let's go find something to kill, huh? All this talk makes my hands twitchy. <laughs> nice, okay. Pull up a drink, Warden. Join me in my sodding hole. Something bothering you? Nah, uh, just tired is all. Did you want to talk about something? I'd like to know more about you. What about? Do you miss Orzammar? What? Miss Orzammar? Are you <laughs> mad in addition to being ugly? <laughs> they treated me like a puddle fly back there. I'm never going back. <laughs> all right. Aye, all right then. I got a moment, <laughs> sure. What about? What is it like to be a warrior in Ozuma? You get a sword or an axe and are told to go out and defend your city. It's the best thing in the world. That is until you try to live in the city you saved. What do you mean? I mean, they train you to kill, teach you to harness your rage at the first noise you hear, then try to set a hundred sodding rules about it. Like those provings. <laughs> Ancestors show their favor through the strongest arm, right? So why so many rules saying how to fight and when you win and not to bloody kill? Killing's what swords are for. Fighting without killing is a skill of a true warrior. Sounds like a big Kratos moment. Yeah, if that's how you feel, <laughs> next time the dark spawn are chewing on your leg. <laughs> this makes me cranky. Don't you have any other inane questions? All right. Cool. Hi. All right, then. So, got some dialogue. <laughs> I got a moment. And then, um, I don't think he can teach us to fight because we're not a warrior. You want to be a berserker? <laughs> Thought I'd never see the day. You're a monster on the field already, Warden. But your style just doesn't give itself to mad rage. Too much thinking, too much, uh, what you call it, uh, finesse. Hmm? But if you know someone fit for this type of work, I'll teach him. It'll be nice to have another Berserker to grunt at for a change. Cool. Tell me more about Berserkers. What the sod is there to know? You get mad, you fly into battle, and things die. It's pretty simple. The hard part is getting in touch with your rage. We all learn to hold that back. It's why we don't kill every duster who looks at us sideways. You need to shut that off. For some people, being in battle is enough. But others have to think about something. Violence, monsters, nobles, your wife, whatever. Your wife. <laughs> I, especially my wife. Just thinking about it works? Uh, for most berserkers, it does. Several years ago, I worked with a berserker on one expedition who just couldn't work himself up. We had to kick him in the stones before he could get going. <laughs> Why would you want to fight that way? Why not? 
When you fight, you get mad. By the stone, it's a sodding tactic to enrage your enemy so he makes a mistake, right? Berserkers grab that anger and drink it like it's yesterday's ale. Then we turn it against our foes and watch the limbs fly. And just thinking angry, uh, angry thoughts makes it happen. Oh, for most berserkers, it does. Several years ago, I worked with a berserker on one expedition who just couldn't work himself up. We had to kick him in the stones before he could get going. Ogren's drunk. He's telling me the same story twice. Thank you for the lesson. Goodbye. Aye. All right, then. Specialization unlocked for a berserker, so we can now have fellow fellow warriors engage in the berserker class. All right, good. Let us talk to Shale, because we've learned some things about Shale's origins, which is really cool. Shale of House Kadash. Is that who I once was? I find this difficult to believe. You're tall for a dwarf. <laughs> you doubting Caradon now? No, I do not doubt him. I simply cannot remember. If I was this Shale of House Kadash, as Caradon said, there must be some evidence of my existence remaining. I must find it. You think something will trigger your memory, and perhaps there are records in Orzammar. There is another way. What Caradon said, it has allowed me to remember one thing. I believe I know where Kadash Taig is. Ooh, okay then. There will be there will be an Orzammar return uh, for Shale's origins. Cool. We can go there if you like. Its offer is appreciated. I will mark the location on its map. If we can journey there soon, I am most curious as to what we will find. Oh yeah, Gollum's memories. Traveling the deep roads has jolted Shale's memories of Kadash Taig. The Gollum believes that visiting her former Taig may unlock further memories. That sounds like a good idea. I have a question for it, if it will indulge me. It chose to side with Caradon and destroy the Anvil of the Void. I agree with its decision. And yet the Paragon Branca was the reason it ventured into the Deep Roads. Why did it choose to defy her? It could not have known for certain that Caradon would be able to assist it with the dwarves. I like that we can actually talk to Shale now instead of... Uh, when we talk to her. <laughs> um, interesting, there are... Th I kind of want to go with either one or three here. You believed in Caradon. I wasn't going to let you down. I... I am pleased, then. I had no idea that was why it did that. At any rate, I wanted to thank it. It gave Caradon the end he wanted, and I'm pleased to have been a part of it. I will have to think on Caradon's words to me. It was... a great deal to absorb. But for now, let us go on. Dragon Age has such cool characters. And what's what I really like about Dragon Age characters is there's a few of them that join your party that are very abrasive and they're very tough to get to know, to get into at all. Like they're just stonewall you. Sten and Shale in particular. Um, and then building up that dialogue with them and that rapport or giving them a gift... <laughs> allows them to uh be like all right i'll i'll be a little bit more vulnerable with you and show you some stuff and um i still don't really connect with stan that much at all but it's much better than him just kind of moping around the camp uh but shale's great uh shale's amazing the whole the whole team the whole the whole group so far um, how are we looking on this screen? Like, it it looks pretty full to me. There's, we got a dwarf, a canary, a, a, a rock, a dog, a bunch of humans. Um, pretty good. And we got an elf. So they've covered, they've covered the ground pretty well, right? I mean, there's... I, I'm trying to look if there would be more room to fit anyone else here at, at this point. 
I'm assuming if I was taller, I would just slot in here. So I'm like, could there be someone behind me? But I'm like, nah, because if I was a human, I'd be this tall. I mean, you could probably fit someone else in here, but we're, we're pretty deep into the game. But I really like this. Um, I really like this crew. It's so massive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're like a we're like a fellowship of the ring with an extra member with a dog. You know, if the fellowship of the ring had a dog, <laughs> and a, a sincere lack of hobbits, but uh, we just got a couple of dwarves instead. But yeah, I, uh, I I I love this uh, motley crew that we've got going on here, and the, the characters are really great to get to know. And while I was saying how it's it's really tough and challenging, the further you get into a game, to adapt your party and bring in the new blood when you get like very familiar with um, like we were rocking like Alistair and Morrigan for ages because they were like the first ones to come in and like very useful. And I like Alistair, and then. You know, I, when when Zev started coming in, I was like, man, it's, it's really hard for me to, like, change my party and be like, oh, OK, let's bring in Zev and see how that goes. I just, like, wasn't feeling any connection there. And then I've sort of eaten my words a bit because Shale and Ogren have come in. And immediately I'm like, oh, I kind of want these to be my party regulars, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's actually quite funny how it, it is just circumstantial. It really is. Like, it just depends who comes in and, and who tickles your fancy. So while I am going to try and still give different uh, party members their, their time under the sun, uh, there will be some people that I'd love to just continue taking with me. Like, Shale got a really nice amount of time in Orzammar. So when we go to the Brazilian forest, I am going to change it up a bit for sure uh, and bring some different people in. And I think that's a that's a good thing. Like these major locations, having different people go to go to each one, you know. I've watched a lot of humans in my time. It should be aware that I have decided that it is not much like any of them. That's because I'm a dwarf. <laughs> because I am not human. Oh, it's not just that. Well, I'm sure that's part of it, but it's not only that. Surely it must come from some superior lineage, yes. Some breed of flesh creature that has decided to elevate its genetic stock above its natural shortcomings. Actually, I'm kind of like the shit on the bottom of a boot with an alcoholic mother in uh, Dust Town. So not really. Um, there's a backhanded compliment in there somewhere. I am castless and an exile. Is that what you meant? Then uh, that must be it. My experience with dwarves is limited, but uh, obviously I need to encounter more of them. Other than Ogren, I would appreciate if it didn't spread around that I said anything. Humans might start to get the wrong idea. They might start thinking their race is not completely hopeless. <laughs> um, I love that it's like Shale, previously a dwarf, is like, don't have much dwarf experience. Amnesia is one hell of a thing. Indeed. Can it imagine the horror? <laughs> Now, let us crush something into a fine paste before it starts to think I've gone all soft. Perish the thought. <laughs> it speaks. Yes. I have some questions. It doesn't have better things to do. All right, so let's go through let's go through all of these cuz I I feel like we need to go through these to unlock more pieces of dialogue so let's just run through it i'm told you killed your former master i've gotten to know you and i've run with you for ages but let's go back to when we first found you did i not already tell it that i do not remember doing such i remember having a master my memories of what happened to him are vague vague but not non-existent clever and true oh very well let me see what I can recall. My former master enjoyed experimenting upon me. I remember that much. There was tinkering with spells and then the crystals. He was very eager to alter my function, I think. What sorts of experiments? Bah, I am no mage, and he did not explain himself to me any more than it would explain itself to a sword. He possessed my control rod, 
and back then, it would have prevented me from doing anything he did not command me to, no matter how I might have wished to. So what happened? I am unsure. He was experimenting, and then... nothing. So he hit the kill me button by accident? Ho ho ho. It does like to laugh, does it? But who knows, I may have such a thing. And then he was gone. I was standing where I was, in the village, and I could no longer move. The villagers came, poked and prodded me in fear, and then realized they could neither move me nor destroy me. So they simply left me. And in time, I forgot I hadn't stood there all along. It must have been terrible. I'm sorry. <sighs> in fact, at first, I found it more of a relief. For so many years, I'd had to leap to that little toadstool's every command. Get this, pick up that, put it down, pick it up again. The gall! At first, I'd hoped he'd simply decided to leave me there paralyzed. An acceptable trade-off. After years passed, I simply stopped caring. Maybe it has something to do with your crystals. Hmm, possibly. Except that he was not experimenting with the crystals at the time, I think. But my memory is not good. It may be correct. Whatever the mage did seemed to render the control rod useless. For which I should be thankful, yes? And provided it doesn't decide to copy his experiments, not that I would allow it, it is nothing to fear from me. Much. Okay. Sounds good to me. The things that it fights, and it fights things often, that is a different story. Let us get back to the walking and the fighting. My stone is beginning to itch again. My stone is beginning to itch again? It speaks. It doesn't have better things to do. How did you end up in Honleith? Do you remember? Oh yes, that I remember quite well. My former master, the mage Wilhelm, he brought me. As I recall, he had acquired some position with whatever lord ruled the land. I, being little more than a glorified possession at the time, was brought along. Oh, how he enjoyed impressing the villagers with me. Gollum snarl at that villager there, be fearsome. And of course, I would have to do it. <sighs> Do you remember anything before Honleith? I traveled with the mage. He did a lot of traveling, I remember that. But where we went? It is rather fuzzy. I remember great battles, fighting many humans long ago. They were all very soft and squishy. And before that, I... No, there are only images. I was somewhere dark. There are only images I was somewhere dark, like in the deep roads. I would have thought you'd enjoy scaring humans. Yes, but it was not of her own volition. I'd have happily stomped them all into paste, and then ripped down their little houses and stomped on them, too. In fact, after 30 years of watching them, I'd do it twice. What I didn't like was being ordered to do it. Mm -hmm. Dangled in front of those frightened morons like some scary thing. Once I was a statue, it took those villagers years before they'd even approach me. The first one to actually work up the nerve to touch me urinated himself. Ugh. But why were you out in front of the tower? That is where Wilhelm kept me. He wanted me out in the open where I could be frightening like a scarecrow. I was supposed to watch for thieves. Bah. Plus, his wife didn't want me indoors. She said there wasn't room for me. Hag. His wife. Hmm. I was once larger, ten feet tall. Oh. I complained that I couldn't fit through the doors. So the mage had me shrunk down, shrunk down. Can it believe it? And she still wanted me out. That's, there you go. There's the explanation as to why Shale is smaller than all of the other golems. How does someone shrink a golem? With a chisel and a lot of nerve. Oh, damn. You can't just magically sh shrink. You got to you got to carve carve it down. I wonder how if golems can sort of like feel that in terms of like 
They got any nerve endings in the in their stone body? You didn't like this, Will Elmar? Take it. <laughs> the most obvious thing I can ask right now. He did love using that control rod. Fondled it so much, his wife actually threatened to throw it in the lake. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Which reminds me, where did it find the rod? Did it pay a great deal for it? Uh, Willem's wife sold it, I believe. Hag. Good. I was just about done talking about it. It does like to have a good chat now and again, doesn't it? Every now and then. It speaks. It doesn't have better things to do. How did Wilhelm come to acquire you? That part I know, as Wilhelm often bragged about it to whomever was willing to listen to him. He claimed to have found me in the deep roads. I was in the ruins of a tig, he said, deactivated with my control rod not far away. Shale's very selective amnesia. You don't know why you were there? I think I remember a battle. It was long before, and then there was darkness. Bah, in short, no, I do not remember why I was there. It makes no difference. What was Wilhelm doing in the Deep Roads? It was a hobby of his, scavenging. One of the reasons he traveled so much is that he was looking for entrances into the Deep Roads, old places the dwarves had long forgotten. And then he would sneak down and search for magical treasure before anyone was the wiser. Wouldn't that have been dangerous? Indeed. He had spells that allowed him to remain hidden and move quickly, but he had no defense against the blight and worried constantly that he would get sick. If any darkspawn showed themselves, he fled. More often, he would have to fight other scavengers, dwarfs who had become tainted. In the end, it killed him. I mean, he found me there, right? <laughs> So if he hadn't found you? I wouldn't have had to put up with the twit, and I would be none the wiser. I don't think I was aware while I was there. Not like in the village. Or perhaps I was. Perhaps that was the dark place, and I simply couldn't see anything. How long could even I sit in the darkness and stare out at nothing, never sleeping? <gasps> oh, I do not wish to think of that. Gollum existentialism. <laughs> Do you know where in the Deep Roads this was? No. That secretive bastard refused to tell me. I would ask and ask, but no. He used to say that one day, if I were compliant and didn't talk back at his wife, he would take me there and I could look around myself. Rotten, lying bastard. If I had his head in my hands now, I would squeeze it like a giant lemon. Squish. <laughs> On them. Oh, amazing. It speaks. It doesn't have better things to do. See, what's good about this is like you can talk to Shale and just gain natural approval, which is very nice. But when you talk to Stan, there's nothing. So with Stan, you have to take him out with you and do actions that line up with his, you know, his positive thoughts and stuff like what he would agree with. So you have to actively try and get his approval out in the field and then talk to him. And that's just not going to work with the, with the type of character that I am. You watch that village day and night for years. I do not sleep, so yes. And I thank it for reminding me. Try to imagine, if it will, what it would be like to be surrounded by nothing but boring peasants all oblivious to it. Yes, that would be rather horrid. And then there were the birds. A whole village full of pigeons and ravens and sparrows all perching on me day in and day out. Sounds a little messy. Those foolish villagers would spread bird seed near me, drawing the birds because they thought having birds perch on me was quaint. Quaint! If there hadn't been the occasional kind soul to scour me clean, I would... Ugh, I would... I don't care to discuss this anymore. <laughs> this dialogue's so good. It speaks. It doesn't have better things to do. Okay, you don't seem to like humans much. That is true. I do not. I'm not interested in getting into a discussion on the subject, however. Ask another time. 
If it is done asking overly obvious questions, let us find some humans to throw off a cliff or something. It speaks. All right, one more. It doesn't have better things to do. So you're female. I had no idea. I did not think it needed to be said. It has never told me what gender it is, has it? I am not made of rock. <laughs> well, I am male. Good for it. I am sure that to other creatures as soft and weak as itself, that would be perfectly obvious. The truth is that whatever gender I was is irrelevant now. I am a golem. I have no gender. It will not become an issue. Dragon Age Origins destroying gender roles. Let's go. <laughs> they, they were ahead of the curve, baby. They're just like, I'm a golem. I'm whatever I want to be. You're just cuter than before? Oh no, we can flirt with the golem. That's awful. Why does why do we have to cut to a sexism option? <laughs> they just immediately go, well, now I have to open doors for you, because chivalry. <laughs> it's like it's, it's, but what I really like about this is this is a very interesting perspective on how people instantly switch how their brains are wired when talking with people when this stuff is discussed. People will inherently talk to people and engage with people, like de just wholly depending on, on their gender. They would talk to a guy differently. They would talk to a girl differently. Um, and then when, they're, when there are people who wish to be like fluid and whatever they want to be, Everyone goes, I don't know how to deal with this, and this is weird, so uh, I'm going to start, like, having to get weirdly defensive. Like, people just don't know how to let people just live their lives. It doesn't bother you. Just don't let it bother you, man. It's not your life. Um, so it's funny that uh, you actually see that this is it's a realistic actual, like, list of responses because there are people that will instantly change up their tune or start talking or uh, interacting with you with you differently and it's really funny um and it's and it's great because uh people do this to dogs all the time everyone will automatically go wow he's so cute and they'll go oh no it's a she and they'll go oh she sorry and they'll correct it they'll move on with their lives do that to a human and nobody knows how to process that information apparently <laughs> just yeah it's it's funny <laughs> good let us leave it at that now let us crush something soft and watch it fountain blood. <laughs> that is a girlish thing to want to do, yes? This dialogue is very, very good. There we go. Inspired for moderate strength. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> and now we can go and talk to... Well, we've spoken to... I'm going to speak to Wynne now because Wynne was our third one in the group. We've already spoken about some things with her, almost like falling down and everything, but she should have some new stuff. And if not, we'll talk to everybody else. What's on your mind? Is there something we can do to cure you? Cure you of the spirit that has bonded itself to you? Cure me? What, am I sick now? In a sense? Even you know that you cannot cure the dead. And I'm not the only one dying. You are too. <laughs> I'm just more efficient about it. <laughs> ah, child. Your concern is heartwarming. But death comes to everyone, and it is not something to fear. I don't fear death, it's the dying that scares me. You're not afraid? People fear not death, but having life taken from them. Many waste the life given to them, occupying themselves with things that do not matter. When the end comes, they say they did not have time enough to spend with loved ones, to fulfill dreams, to go on adventures they only talked about. But why should you fear death if you are happy with the life you have led? If you can look back on everything and say, yes, I am content, it is enough. Are you content? I think I've led a good life, a full life, and I for one am not afraid of death, whatever it may bring. They say that when you die, your spirit travels through the Fade and returns to the Maker. And after that, we'll see, won't we? <laughs> What's on your mind? Do you have any regrets at all? I try not to dwell too much on the mistakes of my past, of which there are many. I would go quite mad if I did that. But I do have one regret. The greatest misstep of my life 
made even more grave because it had dire consequences for someone else. What did you do? Years ago, I was assigned as mentor to a lad, Anaren. He was my first apprentice. Anaren was an elf, raised in one of the elven alienages, and he was very mistrustful of humans, especially humans in authority. I can see how this could be trouble. What Anaren needed was time. Time to get used to his new home. Time to emerge from his shell, so we could build a rapport. I gave him no such time. I was young and arrogant. He is a mage, I thought. He needs to grow up and act like one. I expected too much from him, too quickly. I gave no consideration to his origin or his feelings. And he retreated further from me. All I could think of was how stubborn he was, how he was throwing away all his talent and his potential, just to be difficult. And what did he think of you? Oh, I dread to think. I was a harsh taskmistress. He might have thought I was a demon in disguise. You cannot plant crops in the cold, wintry ground. You cannot teach a student who is closed off and unresponsive. Patience is what is needed. And I learned that too late to help him. What happened to Anaren? Anaren ran away from the circle one night. I had berated him over some trivial, ridiculous matter that I no longer remember. I drove him away because of something utterly unimportant. He was a child, 14 at the time of his leaving. They had his phylactery, and they hunted him down. Phylactery? The phylactery is a vial of blood taken from a mage. But blood is connected to life, and your blood can be used to track you down. They called him Maleficar, a mage who practices forbidden magic, deserving of death. He was a child, misunderstood and lost. I begged the Templars to tell me if he suffered, if they gave him a quick death. I got no answers from them. I was his mentor, and they wouldn't even tell me what became of him. Wow. It's not your fault, Wynne. I should have known better. I had the best mentors. They were kind, compassionate. Why didn't I learn from them? I failed in Aaron. All I had to do was listen to him. He would try to talk to me, and I would tell him to concentrate on his spells. He talked about the alienage sometimes, and the Dalish. He always talked about looking for the Dalish elves. Maybe he did find the Dalish. The Templars are well-trained and thorough. That he still lives, it would be a vain hope. The apprentices that came after Anaren benefited greatly from the lessons I learned from him. In a sense, he was my teacher, and I his student. And maybe his sacrifice was worthwhile. And there it is. My story, my one greatest regret. Rough. New quest, though. Help Wynne find closure. Wynne spoke to you about the first pupil she took under her wing, an elf named Aneren. She was quite harsh on him and drove him away from the circle. Aneren spoke often of the Dalish elves and dreamed of finding them. However, Wynne believes that he never managed to find them and that he was hunted down and killed by the Templars. So we're potentially going to be finding... Um, we're potentially going to be finding evidence that I might have found the Dalish. Also, why is Shale's quest not here? What's on your mind? Shale's quest should be there, right? It's just Ogren and Winds at the moment. I'm just thinking about being a Grey Warden. Hmm. Is something troubling you? No, I think it was the best thing that happened to me. You are one of the two surviving Grey Wardens in Ferelden. You defend all of us, and much rests on your shoulders. It may not mean much to you, but thank you for having the courage to continue to fight. I will be ready when the time comes. And that gives me hope. Have you heard much about the Grey Wardens of old? 
Only what I've heard in the old tales. It was said that watching the wardens ride in on their white griffins was enough to rouse a weary heart and put the dance back in the step of an old man. The Grey Wardens were powerful, feared and respected, but they also inspired the common people. I remember a tale that was told to me many years ago. Does the story have griffins in it? I wish to know about the griffins. When do I get to ride a griffin? Where do we get them? How can I get one? How can Mapo the Dwarf ride a griffin into battle? The blight had ravaged the land for months, and the armies of the great kings had amassed for one last stand. As the sun burst through the clouds that boiled and churned in the dark sky above, it illuminated a vast, seething horde of darkspawn, with the archdemon at its head. And it was then, when courage seemed to fail, and all lost to death and despair, that the Grey Wardens came. They arrived with the beating of wings like mighty war drums and stood before the armies of men. Damn. <laughs> griffins? <laughs> yes, griffins. Now listen to the rest of the story. The Grey Wardens, grim and fearless, marched forth, ever between the men and the encroaching darkspawn. They formed a shield of their own bodies and held that line until the archdemon was dead and the last darkspawn lay trampled in the dirt, and then demanding neither reward nor recognition for their sacrifice. The Grey Wardens departed. When the clouds finally rolled back and the sun shone full upon the blighted ground, the Great Kings knew that they had lost no men and none of their blood had been spilled. This story isn't about a specific battle, is it? You are observant. This is a tale about no battle the Grey Wardens have fought, and yet about them all. They have always defended us from the Darkspawn, taking losses so we do not have to. People may have forgotten over the centuries, but nothing has changed. This knowledge has been blessing and burden to Grey Wardens past, and now it shall be your blessing and your burden. Okay. Griffins? What's on your mind? As a Grey Warden, I'll never lead a normal life, will I? You, you've you got the Darkspawn taint in you, boy. No, you won't. But I don't think I was ever meant to be normal. I don't think so either. You would not have been happy living a dull, uneventful life, dying in obscurity. You wonder sometimes, don't you? If your life would be better if you weren't who you are. A little? When I was a young woman in the tower, I came to the realization that the circle would be my life, and I would know no other. Family, love, a simple life. These were things that others took for granted, that I would never have. And this upset you? It made me very moody. All I could think of was being trapped in that tower with no way out and no end in sight. I started hating my life and myself, and one night I found myself in the tower's chapel. I was seeking refuge, maybe answers. Did you find anything? I must have looked tearful or made some noise, because the revered mother came out and decided to speak to me. And because I had no one else to talk to, I talked to her. I must have said many silly things, but she told me that the Maker puts us all on our paths for a reason, and fighting our intended course is what causes so much anguish. And that made you feel better? <laughs> I thought the old biddy was full of rubbish. I was 15, she 16, and I knew everything. So I left, but I always found my way back to that chapel. And as the years passed, I began to see the truth of her words. We were supposed to be polar opposites, mage and priest, but we weren't. There was much about us that was the same. She called her an old biddy. <laughs> I suppose priests have to give up a lot too. The revered mother had lived in the Chantry all her life, 
as I had been in the tower for all of mine. She taught me that you can find your family in the people around you, that you can love your work and find fulfillment in duty. And there is joy even in self-sacrifice. If you put others before yourself, then their well-being is yours, and their happiness is your happiness. Won't be easy to live that way. You can scream and cry and be angry about life as a Grey Warden, mm. or you can accept it and allow yourself to see the good in it. This is your choice. What's on your mind? Very interesting Grey Warden talk with Wynne. I really like Wynne's sort of like take and philosophy on things. Like, it's very interesting uh, how much she's sort of like changed in my eyes through the course of the of the playthrough. She's, she's great. I'd like to ask you something about the circle. I will answer to the best of my ability. Nothing. Goodbye. Something I can help with? We haven't spoken in a while. Uh, let's talk. Yes? What's on your mind? Why did you decide to come to Ferelden? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Orle was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle, and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. What happened to your mother? Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. Cecily. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Do you remember nothing of your mother? Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dried flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. Do I... Why does that, Why does that ring a bell? I don't think I have any gifts on me at the moment. Was there not... Did I not have one of those? Maybe I already gave it to her. Why does that ring a bell? Maybe I might be thinking about this instead. Unless you have them. Are you sure I... You got a bunch of gifts. I'm still scared to read, just in case there are other. Uh, <laughs> just in case there are other. Um, just in case there are other things in here. Thoughtful gift. Who would like a butterfly sword? No, there's nothing here. I don't. I do, I do not know. Can't remember. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? Do you miss anything about Orle? I miss Valroyau. Unlike Val other Royal. cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Valroyau was her own person, and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Valroyau. Streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. Sounds wonderful. Oh, it would take me a day or two to talk about the many splendors of Orlais, her golden fields, her lush meadows. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orlais, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly. And sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orle. What sort of things? Dresses, fine dresses and furs. And shoes, of course. One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. 
Ole is very fashionable, almost ridiculously so. <gasps> but the shoes, <laughs> living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. Such a dwarven take. Shoes are shoes. They're there to keep your feet dry. I like the dwarven perspective. <laughs> well, I'd be stomping in the mud that's not with them. If you saw a pretty lady in a beautiful dress, you'd want to see her dancing in her dainty shoes and not in, in huge boots. I don't know. We do, we do like a girl in the Doc Martens, do we not? That we do. There ain't nothing wrong with a girl in boots. I'd think, great, there's a woman with some sense. <laughs> if she has other assets, I wouldn't be looking at her feet. A beautiful woman will be beautiful anyway, like you are. Oh, we haven't we haven't sparked any romance in a while, have we? We we really haven't. We've had a couple of flirting options, but I guess I've put that on the back burner while we've been diving into the the story. I haven't really given it much thought. Mapo dwarf being celibate right now. <laughs> My mind is on my stones. Just been thinking with my stones. Um, I don't know. Mm. I... Just a couple of rogues. I don't know. You know. Can can I can I even flirt with or be with Morrigan? She just sees the world so differently to me. I am but a dwarf. I cannot dream. But Liliana and I be some sneaky rogues. Maybe we could be rogues together. A beautiful woman will be beautiful anyway, like you are. But you must wear some boots. Let's let's just roll with it. Thank you. It's kind of you to say so. Even wearing these mud-covered horrors, they're sturdy shoes. But sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we? Where them, where the Liliana feet picks at? Where the Liliana feet picks? Something I can help with? I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? I heard that in Orlais, minstrels are often spies. Where did you hear this? Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, let's just say someone told me this a long time ago. And you believe everything you hear? <laughs> Not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers, but some of them are, are what we call bards. And the bards are spies. <laughs> bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. The secret Illuminati of bards. Patron? What sort of patron? Nobles, mostly. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite. And in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. You were a bard, weren't you? I have revealed too much, it seems. But it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. <sighs> Liliana entering battle, singing her songs, and dancing around everywhere in her shoes, and being like, did you used to be a bard? How did you know? But why were you living uh, cloistered? Why were you living as a cloistered sister in rural Ferelden? I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the maker brought me here. Okay. There's more to Liliana than had even been apparent at Lothering, however. She spent much of her life as a bard in Orlay, a minstrel, assassin, and spy employed by the nobles of Val Royo in their elaborate games of intrigue. Something I can help with? Can you teach me to be a bard? Mm, that's an idea. 
I've watched you, and I do think you'd find some of my skills quite easy to pick up. Let's just go over there, away from the others. For safety, yes? I expect there shall be daggers flying about willy-nilly for a time. Nice. Specialization unlocked bard. Something I can help with? Who's, who's going to teach me to be a duelist? Yes? What's on your mind? I've heard some rumors about Olesian spies. There are many rumors about spies, Olesian or otherwise. What are you referring to exactly? That the female ones use skills of seduction? <laughs> oh, I see what you're getting at. Honestly? Yes. Why shouldn't I? Violence is not the only solution. People respond eagerly to others who they believe understand them. They seek approval, friendship, sometimes love. This can be exploited. I'm sure they didn't mind being exploited by you. <laughs> they never complained. Well, they did, but <laughs> after they found out what I had done. Never during. Everyone can be seduced by the right woman. The trick is predicting who she is and becoming her. Master the game and no one can resist you. Do we really choose to go down a romance path with like a master manipulator? <laughs> Gaslight gatekeep girl boss Leliana. God damn. I'm going to go back to Morrigan. <laughs> At least Morrigan tells it how it is. <laughs> Sorry, if you notice me glancing off, uh, I am keeping an eye on my dog who keeps wandering in here and just opened my window. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I'm just like, why is it light in here all of a sudden? The dog's moving my blinds. And you would say you've mastered this game. If I might be so bold, yes, I was quite good at it. Sometimes all I had to do was toss a glance and a smile. Men read promises into such things and will go to great lengths to see that promise fulfilled. Maybe you could smile at the blight and tell it to go away. I could... what? Oh, aren't you funny? I see your point. <laughs> we will slay this darkspawn using conventional means, pointy sticks and all that. But come, it is getting late and there is much to be done. Okay. Something I can help with? Do we have any more? Yes. What's on your mind? Any more? All right, I think the tell me a tale still just goes into stuff I've already heard, right? Unless she gets new tales. All right. It is my job to spin yarns after all. Uh, well, she says, tell me about this again, this again, and then this doesn't say Dark Swan again, so I'm going to pick this. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Dark Spawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Oh. Which one? And then this is all about tell us about this again, so that's cool. It will come to you soon, I'm sure. Okay. Cool, that's Leliana done. Something on your mind? Alistair, it's been a while. Of course. You have not spoken in so long. Well, I guess he, I've probably got his friendship points up enough to be like, hey, can you teach others to be a Templar? And he will say yes, and I can have specialization unlocked, and we've probably had this dialogue choice open to us for eons now. Others, yes, but not yourself. I need someone who's trained first as a warrior. It's as much about discipline as anything. I guess if I'm going to give up Chantry secrets, I may as well go all the way. Send whoever you want trained to me in camp, and I'll see what I can do. Nice. How long have we been able to unlock that? Probably since forever. Is there anyone... Um... Oh, yeah, I can put a point into Bard if I want, but I think Duelist... 
Duelist is the way. Um, Berserker and a Reaver. So it already has those two taken up. Shale is a Shale. Uh, so we can give it to Stan. He could be a, he could be a champion Templar. I don't know what I want to give Stan. If we've got a Berserker and a Reaver, I guess Champion Templar would kind of be sweet. He could be a total shutdown of, of magical properties, potentially. I think he just has a standard level up at the moment. He's got a few attributes that I haven't point put in. Um, let's put the Dexterity up a little bit. Let's put his... That's like mental resistance for warriors and rogues, st more stamina and special attacks. Let's give you some more willpower. Yeah. Champion. The champion inspires allies to attack with renewed vigor. The rally talent now increases attack in addition to its defense bonus. Yes, motivate. Sten, motivational. Um. Oh, we, oh, there was another talent that I missed. <laughs> I didn't see those two. Superiority. The champion is so fearsome that Warcry now knocks nearby opponents off their feet. Ah, oh, yeah, which I've I've seen. We get knocked off our feet in fights before. I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> that was an explosive one. That one was prepped in my chamber. Goddamn. Okay. <laughs> um, Leliana. Oh, well, I mean... Logically, logically, Liliana should be an assassin. I'll be an assassin duelist. She can be a bard assassin. Um, and Zev is also an assassin. <laughs> so that's three rogue assassins. Um, that was a wet sneeze. Um, <laughs> and I'll be the assassin duelist, assassin bard, and then Zev is just an assassin at the moment, right? He could be the assassin ranger. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. But also, she's more of a long range fighter, isn't she? I'm not sure yet. Not ready. Not ready to make that choice. Um, let's give you some more points, though. You've got a lot because you haven't been in the party for a while. So let's let's do that. Um, you've got max stealing. Let's give you some combat tactics. Three talents. Um, I'm reckon archery ones is probably a good idea. Master archer arrow an arrow of slaying. The Archer suffers reduced stamina regeneration for a time, and Master Archer adds an extra attack bonus. Um, well, if it's backstabs, you're not going to really be backstabbing. So I reckon with Liliana, we'll focus on archery. We'll just do more archery focus again. So defensive fire. Critical shot, Master Archer. Uh, that'll be for the specialization. Alistair has also not been with us for a while, so we can choose another one for him. So he's a Templar. And I feel like... I, f I feel like he should be a champion too. I feel like he should be a champion as well. Absolutely, he should. You are a champion, Alistair. Let's get... Let's bump up your strength... I'm looking forward to having Alistair back in my party. Let's give you some more constitution. Let's give you some more willpower. Let's put a point in your dexterity as well. Um, honestly, like... Survival, I guess. Let's give you some survival. Let's give you some nature resistance. Uh, four talents. So we're just going to... <laughs> um... I, th I feel like I should just max out the champion tree right away. That would probably be a good idea. It's a good idea to me. Is it a good idea to anyone else? Who knows? Morrigan, already leveled up. 
Now, yeah, you're just an assassination. I reckon we could give Zev the assassin ranger. I think that would be a good idea. Let's up your cunning a lot. <laughs> just a lot. Give you some willpower, give you some more of that. Um, I maxed out your poison. Let's max out your tactics. Well, not max them out, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, four talents. Let's go with your assassin skills. Let's also give you coup de gras and dual weapon expert. Lovely. These are some overdue level level ups for these characters. All right, great. Something on your mind? Of course. Tell me about the Grey Wardens again. Such as they are. Thank you. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Something on your mind? Yeah, that's it. So Alistair's kind of like at that point where we've gone through everything, I think. What say you? At least for now. Care to answer some questions? By all means. What is your opinion of the Dalish? I know little enough of the Dalish other than the fact that my mother was one, or so I was told. She had fallen in love with an elven woodcutter and accompanied him back to the city, leaving her clan behind for good. And there, of course, the woodcutter died of some filthy disease and my mother was forced into prostitution to pay off his debts. All is tale in the book. Was the woodcutter your father? How should I know? My mother was a whore, as you'll recall. None of the other elven boys in the whorehouse knew their fathers. I was not so unusual. I didn't know my mother either, of course. She died giving birth to me. My first victim, as it were. We were all raised communally by the whores. It was a happy enough existence, ignoring the occasional beating. Until eventually I was sold to the crows. I brought a good price, so I hear. He mentions in almost every single origin sentence about how much he was a good price. <laughs> like, he's, he's hyper fixates on that one. Um, and yet... You're oddly cheerful about it all. He's saving face. What does this have to do with the Dalish? My original point is that my mother's Dalish nature was always a point of fascination for me. Through all the years of my crow training, the one thing of my mother's that I possessed was a pair of gloves. They were of Dalish make. I knew that much and beautiful. I had to keep them hidden, of course, as we were not allowed such things. Eventually, they were discovered, and I never saw them again. But how do you feel about the Dalish in general? I don't feel anything about them. Oh, we heard about them in the city. Even deep in Antiva. I even had the notion once to run off and join them. Naturally, the reality did not live up at all to the fantasies I had constructed as a boy, staring at those gloves. But such is life. Come. Enough talk of the Dalish. Let us move on. What say you? By all means. So tell me about your adventures. My adventures? <laughs> I'm hardly an old man just returned from across the ocean, am I? Should I shake my fist at nearby children while I talk about the good old days? <laughs> old Zevran yells at Cloud. You certainly talk like you've had adventures. Falling down a flight of stairs is an adventure. Falling into someone's bed, also an adventure. I am assuming what you're looking for are professional anecdotes. Let's see, my second mission ever for the Crows was a bit intriguing. I was sent to kill a mage who had been meddling in politics. The Crows were willing to anger the Circle of Magi. In Antiva, nobody is too important to escape the reach of the Crows. They've killed kings and queens. That is simply how it is. As it turned out, the mage in question was quite a delightful young woman. Long, divine legs, as I recall. I caught her in a carriage on her way to escape to the provinces. After I killed her guard, she got down on her hands and knees and begged for her life. Rather aptly, I might add. So I joined her in the carriage for the night and left the next morning. After killing her anyhow. Yes, but not on purpose, actually. The woman had actually convinced me to speak to the crows on her behalf. What can I say? I was young and foolish at the time. Then, as I was kissing her goodbye to return to Antiva City, she slipped on the threshold and fell backwards out of the carriage. Broke her neck. 
Shame, really, but at least it happened quickly. <laughs> so you didn't actually kill her? Not actually, no. I was a bit unimpressed by the development at first. Then I found out that she had told the driver to take her to Janellen instead. She had planned to lose me in the provinces. I would have looked very foolish to the crows. As it was, my master was very impressed that I had done such a fine job of making it look like an accident. The circle of magi was unaware of foul play and everyone was happier all around. That is genuinely hilarious. These sorts of things happen to you often? Like being spared by a benevolent mark who then helps me escape from the crows? Yes, it does seem to happen now and again, doesn't it? It was after that when I learned that one needn't let a pretty face go to your head. Professionalism was key. That's my moral of the day, you see. Thank <laughs> you. You are a terrible person. A wise lesson to learn. And one that not everyone learns, I'm sad to say. But that's enough tail spinning from me for the moment. Uh, talking about the mage has made me a bit nostalgic, I'm afraid. Ah, the good old days. <laughs> Major dexterity, let's go. What say you? What say you? By all means. Tell me more about your adventures. Again? Well now, what might interest you, I wonder? Shall I describe the stages involved with Lanthrax poisoning? I watched a man go through all seven once. If you like, certainly. No, I'll not inflict that upon you just yet. Let's see, how about the largest battle I ever took part in? That would have been the slaughter of Prince Azrin. Did you hear of that down in these parts? Uh, it was underground, no. You killed a prince? Me? Not personally, but I did take part in the attack. Prince Azrin was fourth in line to the throne, you see. He started off as 11th, but worked his way up the old-fashioned method by inheriting control of an entire crocelle from his grandfather. After assassinating his way through the royal family, the king hired three other cells to take down Prince Azrin once and for all. I was in one of those cells. <laughs> Is this sort of thing common in Antiva? Antivan royalty is very much bound up in the crows. You wouldn't want it run by a bunch of commoners, after all, would you? And this means they get involved in politics quite often. This particular fight nearly bankrupted the nation, I understand. It almost ended up putting a crow on the throne, a commoner. But that's a whole different story. I played a very small part. Wild. What did you do? My part in the entire battle was taken up trying to reach Princess Verina, who had thrown in with her brother. I killed about 11 of her guards personally before I got knocked out of a window. I landed in a river and nearly drowned. I was fished out by some urchins who robbed me blind. Made off with my boots, too. At least they didn't cut my throat. And that was my part in history. You got robbed by urchins? Mm. I had to find my way back to the safe house, bruised and naked, and thankful to be alive. But there you go. Tale told. Let's be off before I tell more embarrassing stories, huh? I think we're definitely going to bring Zev to the Brazilian forest. I think that would be a great idea. Um, so I don't know if I want to rock a party full of rogues, though, which means Leliana is probably not going to come with me. So I think we'll, we might run... Uh, an interesting mix when we when we go. I might put together my Lord of the Rings party and we'll have my elf, my dwarf, <laughs> my my wizard, and my warrior, and we'll um we'll see how we go, but I don't I don't know. Uh so Zev tells us stories. As St oh, oh, Sten would have some things to talk about because of this the sword. I have been mistaken. What do you mean? You are a soldier worthy to stand among the Beresad. I did not think so when we first met. Thank you. You are welcome. The day will come when the Arishok sends us here. On that day, I will not look to find you on the battlefield. Oh, he's like, cool. So after this is done, I'll go home. And then when I eventually come back to conquer your peoples, I will not look for you personally, my small potato friend. You think the Canari will invade for Elden? In time. There is no point in dwelling on it. We should move on. Ooh, I wonder if that'll be a Dragon Age 2 thing. The Canari invasion of Ferelden? Let's go. As you wish. 
Okay. What is your wish, Kadan? Now we have like this respect for each other. I have a question. I am hardly surprised. You find Ferelden very strange. To put it lightly, no one has a place here. Your farmers wish to be merchants. The merchants dream of being nobles, and the nobles become warriors. No one is content to be who they are. Is there anything you like about Ferelden? There is interesting food here. <laughs> you have a thing. It doesn't have a word in the Kunari tongue. Little baked things like bread, but sweet and crumbly. Sweet rolls. Elder Scrolls reference. Cookies? The only thing you like about Froden is sweets. That's great. Cookies? Yes. We have no such things in our lands. This should be remedied. Surely. Oh, there are baked treats as a gift, is there not? Is there not baked treats as a gift? That's great. You sound a bit homesick. Perhaps. It's strange to be in a crowd and hear a language that is not your own. To see faces that are and aren't like yours. I miss the smells of Saharon. Tea and incense and the sea. Ferelden smells of wet dogs. <laughs> you left out rotting garbage. True. I was trying to forget that part. Shall we move on? Uh, I don't know about this question. About don't the Canari ever want to change their lot in life? Like it just it just doesn't seem like a correct question to or a pathway to go down because it's like you know th their culture is their culture as you wish what is your wish Kadan? um I don't think yeah as okay you wish. as you wish uh Morrigan being antisocial over here still being antisocial over here I await your command actually hang on one second <laughs> I await your <laughs> Literally the only companion to save before talking to. <clears throat> and then what do we do after we save and talk to Morrigan? We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. You helped me avoid the fate my mother had in store for me. At the very least, I think I can aid you in return. Why? Do you wish me to leave? I can do so if you prefer. Why are you still here, Morrigan? I thought we were friends. Are we? Then why do you ask such a question? <laughs> oh, it's gone down to it's gone down to minus six now. <laughs> it's minus six. I always just get curious. I just gotta keep asking that question. I await your command. Why are you still here, Marion? So full of questions, are you? <laughs> Can you teach others to become shape changers? Uh, this should allow wind to go through this one, but I'm not gonna have that happen probably. I cannot teach you, no, but any other mages that cared to learn, yes, I could do that. Send whoever you wish my way, and I shall teach them what I can in the camp, provided they possess the will to even make the attempt. Why do I feel like we might end up getting another mage then? Because we've got three warriors. No, four warriors three rogues including myself two mages i guess maybe i could well i guess the thing is i could be the third mage i could be a third rogue i could be a fifth warrior so i don't know i guess it it does take that variety into into account it does take that variety into account i await your command but yeah i think alistair and morgan are the ones that we've kind of drained their conversations of so Full of questions. Yeah. Cool. That's the party camp. That was a lot of conversation, uh, but I think we're pretty good. We're going to talk to Dex now and see if we can have some more unique party encounters with him. Dex wags his tail and looks at Sten. You smell like wet yes, dog. It is good to have my sword at my side again. I call her Asala, the soul, my soul. She is forged from rare blue steel and has served me faithfully for many years. Yes. You understand what it is like to have a weapon that is part of you. Few others do. Wow. He's 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 using uh Dex as a as a therapy animal. Cute. Pet him. Pet the Mabari Warhound. 
Love it. Okay, uh, we're going to choose our next destination, which I said was going to be the Van Lauren lands. Now, I have no idea what to expect here, however. So, densely wooded lands provide much of the timber used in that region. I don't know. So, I think in terms of who we're going to bring along... Um, I think we're going to take... I'll take Alistair because uh, we haven't had him as a warrior in our party for a while. So we're going to take, we're going to take Alistair and I'm going to take Ogren. and I'll take, I'll take Wynn. I feel like that is a, that's a, that's a good, good choice as any. So, rocking with two warriors, but one's a tank and a mage. I kind of want to take Liliana as well, though. Thunder Humper. Thunder Humper. Indeed. I'll bring Liliana because we haven't had her in our party for a while, and we can let Ogren and Shale have a rest. Just join the fray immediately. Uh, take a close, closer look at the unarmed man. You're surprised to recognize the uniform of King Kalen's honor guard. A memory comes to you. You fought alongside this man at Ostagar. Oh, crap. Ostagar survivor. Okay, take a closer look at the guards. The guards wear the uniform of Ban Loren, a minor lord well known and little loved for the fluidity of his allegiances. Okay. Well, this is interesting. Get involved when we don't even know what's happening here. So, Ban Lauren, a minor lord, well known and little loved for the fluidity fluidity of his allegiances. Okay. It doesn't look like it'll be the nicest of encounters. Joining the fray. Hmm. We'll wait for the guards to leave. Let's join the fray. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh. Right. Right, okay. So joining the fray or waiting for the guards to leave is probably going to have the same outcome, right? Because we didn't even do anything and he got, he got gutted like a fish. So, sheesh. <laughs> All right, then. Um, what in the world... A king's confidant. While traveling through the woods of Ben Lawrence Lane, you witnessed a group of soldiers assaulting an unarmed man. Uh, well, I won't read that yet because apparently it says we fought off the attackers. We have not yet. Private militia. PMCs. War has changed. Oh. Wait for them to come to us. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him go. Uh, actually, let's, what, what's Alistair doing right now? Yeah, he's got Warcry in there. He's, he's doing stuff. He's an aggressive defender. Let's go. Those crunches were so loud. Sneeze attack. Oh. Oh. Got him. Elric. Okay. It may be too, uh, but it may be too late for the man they were pursuing. He lies bleed. Oh, bleeding and unconscious. The man was gutted. Up close, the man's face is unmistakable. You remember him as Eric Moraine, a member of Kaelin's Honor Guard at Ostagar and a close confidant of the king. <clears throat> ah, he's fine. Thank you. I, I didn't expect the band's men to notice my escape so quickly. I tried to hide here in the woods, but there wasn't time. 
And now I'm a dead man. This man is fully capable of of speech, despite having a punctured lung. <laughs> he got impaled. He was ran through. And he just gets up and he's like, <clears throat> I'm going to die. I have to be real with you. <laughs> you aren't dead yet. Yeah, this man is uh, not too, uh, no, it's not too long for this world. I tried to help. You were there in Ostago. You know how things went. For me, it was either this or die in some dark spawn's belly or, or be hung as a deserter. Yes, I recognize your face. You were there with the Grey Wardens, one of Duncan's new recruits. I was to guard the king. He was my friend, understand? Maker. All that time in Ban Loren's prison. And I couldn't stop thinking about all they suffered that one dark night at Ostagar. It's not your fault they died. I know. Even had Loghain's men not turned their backs on us. The Darkspawn were too many. Even Kalen, for all his bravado, knew there would be no victory at Ostagar. The king entrusted me with the key to the royal arms chest. If anything were to happen to him, he said, it was vital I deliver it to the Wardens. Do you still have this key? The Maker has a sense of humor, doesn't he? I suppose it's for the best, however. Had I kept it, it would be in Ban Loren's hands by now. But... You said Kaelin entrusted it to you. I was afraid. I thought I would lose it on the battlefield, so I stashed it in the camp. Please, it's probably still there. Are we going back to... Oh, going back to the Ostagar camp? Where? The key's behind a loose stone at the base of a statue. I'll draw a map for you, so you'll know where to search. You'll be taking me along, won't you? Call me sentimental, but I left behind some dark spawn that really deserve a sword through the middle. The events at Ostagar still haunt my thoughts, Warden. If that is where we are headed, I would like to accompany you. It is vital that the King's documents do not fall into the wrong hands. As for Merrick's sword, it is too powerful to be poured at by those monsters. Same for the King's other arms and armor. And... And if you happen to find Caelan's body, see it off. He was our king. He shouldn't be left to rot amidst the Darkspawn's filth. <laughs> and now I must die. Return to Ostagar. Dude, I, when I, I low-key picked the best party to go back to Ostagar, Wynn and Alistair are both like, let's go. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's wild. Um, okay. So DLC to return to Ostagar, recover the king's secret documents, and reclaim the king's belongings. I'm assuming King Kalen has been munched on by Darkspawn, but we'll see if we can find his body. Will we find Duncan's body too? Who knows? Cool. We're going back to Ostagar. Well, Wynn and Alistair are definitely coming. We'll bring Liliana along as well. Sure. According to Elric, the king's arms chest contains documents pertaining to secret talks with Ole. Kalen entrusted the key to Elric who, fearful of capture, hid it within a statue at Ostagar. Given the importance of the documents, the unknown state of the king's body, the opportunity to reclaim the royal arms and armor, and your own desire for revenge, the benefits of a small-scale assault on Ostagar are beginning to outweigh the risk. That's awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your sacrifice. What did you say? Are we going... Okay. I thought we would be going on, like, some sort of interesting mission with a with a Ban Loren character, but it doesn't seem that that is the case at all. Okay, so now, oh, it's reopened. Okay, Ostagar. Ooh. Is our Archdemon once again? Green. You're awake. Did you... Did you feel it too? Oh, we're having a dream! The Dutch demon saw us. Saw us! What does that mean? I think... Wait. Did you hear that? Whoa. <gasps> oh, shit. Whoa! Everyone's in my party right now! 
Oh, what the fuck? It's just us, but like, everyone's just gonna fight of their own volition. <coughs> We're being attacked in the party camp and we have everyone with us. Oh, this is so cool. Um, big ass Sauron, uh, Sauron moment. Who's been playing with the Palantir in the camp at night? They've given away our position. Whoa. Oh my God. What the hell? I can't, con so I, yeah, we can't control anyone. It's just me. Okay. This is so crazy. Wind's doing, <laughs> wind's doing cleansing aura and we're all there and I can't, I can't, I can't get us there because I can't control any other characters. I guess it's like Duncan once said, we can sense them and they can sense us. Damn. We best be more careful from now on. This camp isn't safe any longer. Huh. What will they send next? Darkspawn tax collectors? Fortification should be built around the camp. Yeah, I can't get a bloody night's rest. How unnerving. It will be more difficult to keep here now. What, no trap? No ambush? <laughs> Some assassins. It is done. Let us move on. Huh. Um, everything's gone. There's, there's, uh, Bowden's gone. Oh, what the hell? So we have to, are we fortifying the camp? Or are we, we're leaving? Different party camp? What say you? Uh, what are we doing? Am I just talking? Can I talk to anyone of the... I got a moment. Hey, sure. Oh, this is this is so weird. Hi. All right, then. It's weird for everyone to be in battle right now, but then we can, like, have just normal chats. Oh, th these, this crew is gone as well. Something I can help with? Damn. Because this is, like, premium content DLC stuff. I didn't expect it to actually mess with our home base in such a big way. Um, I guess we're, we're out of here. That's really weird. No more camp? What happens now? Yes. Yes. Um. Indeed. What happens now? Current party campsite. I guess we can leave and come back and find out yes. what will happen. Yes, indeed. Where well, where are we at the moment? I guess we're in the party camp, but we were in Ban Lauren's lands and we can't go back there. So I guess we're going to go back to Ostagar. Yeah, we're here. Maybe I should have just gone to the Kalanhad docks for a brief moment of respite first to have a look at Ogren's quest, but this is bizarre. Oh, blight! Oh, blight wolf. Okay, what is that? What is that? What does that even say? <laughs> Big wolf. <laughs> Beriscon, a Beriscon. Look at this thing. <laughs> Uh, new codex entry for this one? Yes. A go oh, no. Uh, ghoul. Those were definitely not ghouls, right? What, it, what the blight does not destroy, it corrupts. So I guess these are corrupted. I guess they're, yeah. Uh, the, the, wolf, the blight wolves count as ghouls because they've been corrupted. Any creature infected with a darkspawn taint that does not have the good fortune to die outright becomes a ghoul, a twisted shadow of itself. The name originally comes from men, whether human, dwarven, or elven, who become, became tainted, usually while being held as a captive food source by the Darkspawn. They would turn cannibal, preying on other captives, slaves to the will of the Archdemon, driven mad by pain. 
During a blight, the corruption of the darkspawn spreads through the wilder areas of Thetis and infects the animals found there. This produces grotesque, enraged bears uh, called uh, Beraskan, as well as blight wolves. There it is. <laughs> Fortunately, ghouls rarely survive their corruption for long. Damn. Very well. No, it's just blocking the pathways, okay. One way out. Oh, well, we're back. We back. All right. I think this is probably going to end up being quite easier for us because Orzammar was very challenging being in the deep roads. So these dark, these dark spawn are nowhere near as strong. And I guess that's probably, I guess that's probably because being DLC, you can do it kind of whenever, I suppose. Something about returning here makes me feel old, Wynn. And what exactly are you implying, Alistair? <laughs> what? What? No, nothing. No, I just thought... You just thought I might be an expert at feeling old and could share some sage advice. I, I just mean that I was a different person then. I believed him, you know, that it would be a glorious battle that we'd win. I did too. We were all a little bit younger the last time we were here. Well, not you. You've always been old. With lip like that, son, you'll be lucky if you live to be half my age. <laughs> Studded leather armor. Oh, yeah. I wonder what the condition of the stuff will be that we find here. That'll be another thing. Ah, I remember this location. I remember this one. Uh, Raven. It's always weird when you can highlight the ravens. Yeah, I remember this spot. This is where there was a uh, sick person once, and he was like here, and he was like, I'm going crazy. Pile of sacks. A short bow. Let's loot this place. I'm seeing dead Mabari pop up. That makes me sad. Yes, the infirmary. Wait, the... Ah, uh, for a second I thought the quartermaster was here, but it's just the sign. Which is annoying because I want the... I missed a, the backpack when I was here. Okay, well, this is all barricaded. How am I... <laughs> how am I getting... How am I getting through here? This way? They have barricaded it all. Alright, we're going this way. They've flipped the table. Oh no. Huxborn. They just crop up everywhere, don't they? I shall do it. I shall do it. <laughs> I have leveled up. Enough. I shall do it. Good. Another down. I shall do it. Quickly, we will fight. Fight for honor. I am being killed by bees. Oh god! I didn't even notice uh, health. It's been a while. I shall do it. Been a while since I've had to watch Alistair. I need everyone to regroup. Oh my god. As you say. That shall be done. Let's make this quick. Here we go. Good old Alistair. <laughs> Classic Alistair. I was not watching you, sir, and you perished as a result. Um, 
I can't remember if there's anything that actually needs strength on my character. Um, outside of, yeah, armor that I'll never wear. So I'll do that. And I'm going to start bumping up my willpower. So I have some more stamina. Um, hmm. Well, I can, I can try stealth in combat and I can do this to master the art of stealth, a significant bonus. So I might try to do that so I can master stealth myself in, in combat to get the, to, to maybe do some surprise attacks or runaways, or I can start going into this tree. They're all personal attacks though, that I'm, I'm really just kind of using some different moves. The character has learned to carry one attack through to the next, um, increasing attack speed, but it consumes stamina. So it's momentum that I can use, I guess, before combat. Let's, let's grab that. Ooh, oh, okay. So there's Darkspawn that have all of the armor. I see Kalen's Greaves. So King Kalen confirmed to have 42 strength minimum. They are ornate etchings inlaid with gold. These heavy greaves were intended as much for ceremony as for battle. When equipped in a set with Kaelin's breastplate, helm, and gauntlets, the character's fatigue is reduced, and he gains a bonus to health regen while in combat. Uh, 42 strength, so I barely have any characters that even come close to that right now. Um, Kazalis is at 39, so we could put th three points of... Um, he could wear the king's armor. He is next in line to the throne. He could have the King's Armor. Next level up, Alistair, we'll give you three points into strength. What say you? What say you? Hmm? Let's, let's cleanse that injury from you too. Demonic poison. What's the matter, Alistair? I don't know. It just feels wrong to find this here. Poured over by dark spawn and thick with their rot. It was his. I know, I feel it too. But he is not the first king to ever fall in battle, or even the first to fall to the Darkspawn. Yes, but this wound cuts deeper. And it will bleed longer. But we must keep moving. No doubt the Darkspawn are eager to give us plenty more reasons to mourn. This is great. Very good choice to bring these two. A lot of dialogue from them to get. I've definitely fucked with uh, the tactics by resetting something, and now <laughs> uh, Wynn is always doing stuff. That's fine, I suppose. The joining chalice. Well, I guess we'll need that. It's a gift. Uh, we need that for more Grey Wardens. Darkspawn blood still encrusts this silver chalice with a shudder. You remember the day you brought it to your lips and drank deeply of all the mysteries that lay within. I suppose we'd be giving it to Alistair if it's a gift. All right. And then he'll talk about it in dialogue. Let's see. I could get used to this, you know. <laughs> are, you, are you sure? All right, never mind then. <laughs> Gives him joining chalice. I could get used to this. Sure. All right. No dialogue to be gained there, so I don't know why it's a gift. Who would we give it to? Like, what? Strange. First thought would have been Alistair, but apparently not. God, there's so many of them. All right, let's let's uh, let's have you do Earthquake. So they'll just run right through it. Yes. Defend yourself! That will slow them down some. Everyone's just going for the win. They're being smart. They're being smart. 
Everyone's going for win. They're like, go for the mage. Fuck's sake. <laughs> That's so fucking annoying. Stop going for my mage. You fuckers. Stop doing that. Forge master, God. Let's ambit. Make a preserver. Actually, remember, I need to put these. Uh, no, these are all passive. Um, these are all passive. I don't even have anything to put in my my quick bar. Damn, momentum really do increase my speed. I got I got speed lines coming off me. They just crop up everywhere, don't they? I got speed lines coming off me. All right, let's do this again. Off I go. Oh, we can cast haste. Immediately. Let's give every, let's give everyone haste. Haste and momentum. Let's go. Oh, there's a Darkspawn Forge now. And a chest here. I shall do it. I shall do it. it this is, is a, this is great that we can return here. And then if we open the chest, guys, it will have all of all of the backpacks I missed. Oh god. No. Darkspawn Forge. The Darkspawn have fastened crude spikes and a corrupted Haller skull to the simple blacksmith's forge that you remember as if turning it into an idol. Ooh. Okay, nothing to be gained be and done. no codex or anything like that. Ah, Elric's buried key. There it is. Mage's chest. Oh. Key required. How about this? Key to the Royal Arms Chest. The teeth of this key are intricate and finely wrought, clearly the work of a talented locksmith. Is it to the this one here, or is it somewhere else? As you say. Different key required as expected, because that's not the Royal Arms Chest. Okay. Duncan's Fire. Not the dead Mabari. Not in the barry. It has begun. Battle axe. Oh. Firestone harness, cold resistance, and plus four attack. Nice. Oh! Hey! Very well. Oh shit, they've got black wolves! Oh my god. It's a trap! Shall be done. <laughs> Oh shit, there's so many of them and they're all out there too. All right, everybody get here. Everybody! Oh my god, I'm Amber, please! Um, perfect timing. See ya! Oh, I didn't work. I'm like, I'll try, I'll stealth out of there. Good thing I upgraded to Master Stealth real quick. Oh my god, oh! Win. I was trying to get win. I was gonna try and get win out of there after that, but no. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, 
Wynn Win decided that she can no longer bring herself back from the dead. Oh my god. Holy fuck. Holy shit. I've... The dog's stunned, but it's doing its overwhelm ability. This isn't good. Liliana's dead. Oh my fucking god, dude. Stealth doesn't work because I'm in the middle of combat at the same time. Holy shit, dude. Okay. Yeah, pin that big boy down. It's just the three of us. We got this. Holy shit. That was a terrifying, that was a terrifying ambush. Holy crap. Damn. Okay, how we doing team? We alive after that? Jeez. Caleb's shield, two dogs ramp, uh, rampant, support a golden crown. One wields an axe as a symbol of might, the other a royal scepter as a symbol of command. When equipped in a set with Marek's blade, the character gains bonuses to damage and to stamina regen while in combat. 34 strength. Dude, we're about to turn Alistair into a goddamn royal tank. That's for sure. Alistair's gonna get all of this stuff. It's gonna be awesome. Another dead Mabari and Swift Runner War Paint. Two decks, two damage. What have you got at the moment? You have physical resistance, eight attack, eight armor. Yeah, that's what that's what we want for you. Ah, yes, the Royal Enclave tent has burned down. That makes sense. Okay. Oh, they've put all dark spawn stuff on the fire. The Darkspawn have done their best to defile the bonfire where Duncan kept his nightly watch. Perhaps they still sense something of the man's power. Expecting another ambush at this chest. I shall do it. Marek's blade. Runes glow along the length of this mighty blade. King Marek, father to King Kaelin, bore it in his battles against Orle. When equipped in a set with Kaelin's shield, bonuses to damage and stamina regen. Health regen, stamina regen, six damage plus Darksborn. Nice. And two runic slots. Enchantment slots, I should say. A bundle of documents comprised mostly of private correspondence to and from King Kaelin. So it's true. He had convinced the forces of Orlais to ally against the Darkspawn. Empress Selene was merely awaiting his response. A response that never came, and now never will, thanks to Loghain's treachery. Never is a long time, Alistair. Give it time, and let cooler heads prevail. There will be peace between us yet. Well, I hope you live to see it, Quinn. And I hope the Darkspawn don't. All right, then let's have a look at this. So you've got, we can't take these off right now. Actually, are we going to be able to take these off again? Uh, our friends have left the camp. Oh, you don't even have one on your, let's just put that on your second slot. So we've got Gregor's shield. Um, Kaelin's shield is worse, but I mean we do get a bonus, so I guess we'll do we'll we'll stick it on. So there will be a uh, will be a stat bonus anyway. Nice. And now you need you've got you may need two two more armor pieces. And you'd like. And we'll equip the full set because you can't equip them yet. Oh, no, we don't have the full set. We only got one. We, it was the shield that we got. So we need three more armor pieces. Is that everything for that? Ah, oh, we might. Can we go that way? Because 
Because this was the tower, right? Ah, yeah. This was the tower that when we went to to do the fight with the ogre. It's saving there, so we'll go here first. I think Liliana's out of fire arrows finally. Yeah, she is. So have some more. That! <laughs> Repeater gloves, Drake skin, rapid aim, and armor penetration, which means. Would you like some gloves? What have you got? You've got just leather gloves on. Guess what? You got some new gloves, baby. Give the archer some rapid fire gloves. As you say. Very well. That sounds like duck. That sounds like duck spawn to me. Are they trying to shoot? Sh Are they trying to shoot stuff at us? They do be trying to shoot stuff at us. <laughs> this one guy. More of them. Why can't I attack? So we get the armor pieces or the important stuff with a big fight. With Im Im the important dark spawn. I shall do it. We can just randomly shoot that out into the forest too, if we so please. As you say. All right. Looks like we're going to the bridge. We're going through there. So it saved on this bridge or before this bridge before auto save. So there, yeah, I was like, I'm waiting for something. Oh, no shot. They stripped him naked and hung him up. Oh, that's that. That is too far. Now it is war. Oh my God. Not the fact that they specifically stripped him of his clothing and each of the Darkspawn top dogs held onto it. Held onto a piece of armor and then just went, this is your king. That's highly cruel and intelligent. God damn. They didn't eat him. They're like, this is a reminder. Oh God, I got the sad eyebrows. This is a reminder of your darkest failure. Oh, we're about to get spirit bombed. Oh, that undead has a cute dude. Animal head. Shambling skeleton. Okay. Oh, God. And over the other side of the bridge, too. <laughs> oh, dude, no. That's fucked. They strung him up and put him on display. Let's go. Oh, there's a skeleton mage. Because, of course, there is. We're getting chain lightning. Oh, he's frozen. Why won't any of my characters move? I've picked everyone. Can, okay, you guys are... Oh, they're in trouble. I need to take out the people that are closest. I 
shall do it. I shall do it. God damn. So that guy that showed up to summon the Skellington, the Skellingtons, Jack Skellington, uh, ran away because he was not part of this because the skeleton mage was different. Sheesh. Forgive us, my king. Once we flushed the dark spawn from their holes and bought ourselves some time, we'll be back to see you to the maker. Where's Duncan at then? As you say. Do you reckon he was strung up somewhere as well? Or he didn't have the... Because he, he wasn't wearing like royal arms. He was not recognized. And he was just eaten. I wonder. Right. Oh, you've got... They're running away to a bunch of traps. I shall do it. Did they just... I swear this dude just used the ballista and attacked one of their own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he hit one of their own. He's, he's continuously hitting one of their own with the... Oh my god, that is just fucking stupid shit. That is hilarious. It, okay, it hit us all that time. Get him! Oh god. Alright, the dog took him off. We're good. Oh, I... Fuck. God. Try not to stand in stupid spot challenge. Impossible. Oh, why... Why would it push me down the hill? I keep getting stuck when I'm trying to target an enemy and I just keep standing there in this stupid spot. This guy's throwing shit in a completely opposite direction. Look at this guy. He's just stuck facing the other way. Look there. Oh, there's so many of them. A Herlock strategist. Tower of a shell. Back where we uh, were rescued by Flemeth. Nope. What's on your mind? It is no. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Trying to disarm the traps, Alistair runs up right into it, <laughs> and I start talking to Wid instead. Sorry, Alistair. <laughs> I did try to save you from that fate. But uh, never mind. Stupid. Very well. I Sarah's. Maybe we'll switch Liliana over to the ice arrows now. Yep, because you're out of those fire arrows. Hey, I have some ice ones. Get icy with it. The gauntlets. Etchings along the cuff depict a hunting scene. Dogs lead the crowned hunter onward toward a clutch of nested fowl. When equipped in a set of Caitlin's Grieve, we get bonuses. Believe it or not. 
How far are you? Yeah, you're not getting much XP, are you? Not yet, anyway. But you will. Oh, you will. Friendly, I knew that we were about to come across a 42... <laughs> Uh, a 42 strength set. I probably would have put more points into strength before. Alright, there's more stuff up this way, and there is more darkspawn up this way. So, Tower of Shah goes this way, apparently. This is the world map. There's some shit over here. And a Herlock MS3. Oh, and there's the dude that's running away. Chain lightning, eh? How about get fucked? So there's another guy that keeps running away that we need to chase as well. Ooh, Darkspawn stuff and some Amethyst. What would we get from this herlock? Let us take a look. The breastplate. You remember the sun gleaming off this golden armor the first time you met the king when equipped in a set with Kaelin's Greaves. Bonuses. Nice. Okay, we're getting close now. So this is going to take us to... Oh, this takes us to the Tower of Ashal. Why did, uh... Okay. Why did Alistair say it over the other side? He's like, the Tower of Rashal, let's go. There must be two entrances to the tower. Very well. Well, that's the entrance. So, I guess... Yeah, back there actually looks like it doesn't go anywhere. It looks like a dead end. So, I think we're on the right path. It has begun. God, it's annoying sometimes that you just like want to highlight an object and it's like no but if you go tactical mode it's like sure you can do that who'd have thought we'd be returning to this tower another time we have to take the full ascension I guess the final piece was, is with this guy, yeah. Nice dodge. Okay. Oh. Okay. And we continue to run. What? <laughs> Just died immediately. Like, not even a... F what? Oh, what the... What the... What? 
<laughs> Why are they dying in like one hit? That's so wild. Okay. Damn, they really camped out this place. Ooh. Earthquake. Earthquake. I think that's a good idea. Guys, I told you to stay put. Why are you running out that way? I told my guys to to stay put. I put them on hold for a reason. Oh, they, they, they're all so weak in this room for some reason. What the hell? They're all dying in one hit. Yeah. Right, the ogre isn't. The ogre isn't dying in one hit. God, it took so long for my character to get back up again. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. Very well. As you say. What happened in this room? God damn. Done. So for some reason, every enemy, except for the ogre, died in one hit. Feels kind of broken. I don't know if that's intentional or they're just because maybe they're th trying to focus on throwing like numbers at you instead. And they've like kind of balanced that by making them all weak as piss. I don't know. I do not know. And they really, really decorated with this place, huh? Dark spawn. Dark spawn. Who would have thought? Look at that whole room filled with them. Holy crap! Okay. Direct me. <laughs> Can is this even possible? Can I do this right now? Yeah. It is possible. <laughs> <laughs> Just put the put the earthquake on the inside. Okay, nice. Shall be done. As you wish. Oh, berserker on Beriscon. Darkspawn bear. <laughs> Dick's going crazy. Oh my god. Okay, so it looks like the the earthquake did nothing. Shall be done. Yes. Oh shit! Hang on, what's going on? Are we good? We've been, we've been compromised. Actually, hang on. Oh shit. Um. We're gonna do it. It is done. All right, Wind survived. She's just vessel of the spirited right now. I need to turn I need to turn your cleansing aura off because you don't you don't need it. Okay? You genuinely don't need it. Um you don't need that either. You don't need that either. Okay? Turning those off. <laughs> I'm turning those off. I'm gonna update your archer to new tactics as well. What would you like? What would you like?
Nug Crusher. Metal bands bind heavy stone securely to the shaft. 100 stamina, plus 4 dexterity, chance to stun. Mm. Is this a two-handed mole? It certainly looks like it. It is. Ooh. Kind of, I kind of feel like we could give that to Ogren. <laughs> Give him, give him massive, uh, massive hammer. See how he feels. Ugh, down the hole and into the deep. I don't even want to imagine where that leads. Oh, we're going up instead of uh, going down instead of up. Excuse me. Oh, the vessel of spirit ran out. Gotcha. <laughs> now she, now she tired. It's funny how that can that happens out of combat still. Alright. Barricaded door. Door is barricaded. You cannot pass. Okay. Down into the pit we go to the Darkspawn tunnels. Ah, they are no longer dying in one hit. Okay. Um giant spider jump scare holy crap to the arachnophobes good luck with that one that was so intentional like and so a spider is going to appear on your fucking screen as big as possible oh my god ah ah i'm stuck Ooh, spider death blue That was, that was too much. Alright, I wonder how long these darkspawn tunnels are. Because I didn't realize that this was going to be such a undertaking. There's just the one piece of armor left. And then we still need a key to this mage's chest, apparently, wherever that may be. And a bunch of spiders. And a bunch of spiders, as there's spider webs everywhere. As you say. That's a lot of blood. Very well. Okay, so the oh, a master paralyzed rune. So the tunnels are not as short as I thought. Ah, uh, but it is filled with spiders. Damn you. There is an exit. Oh god, I'm being overwhelmed. And I'm webbed. God damn it. God, the, the spider's, like, like noises are so fucking invasive to my ears. Try to get a backstab on a spider challenge. Impossible. Spiders just won't stop fucking moving. Oh, there's more. Oh, well, the just got killed. <laughs> cool. Leliana just got killed. Did you notice? Just in case you didn't notice. Both bleeding. How are you guys doing? You guys okay? You gonna survive? I'll help however I can.
Okay. Battlefield. To a battlefield. All right. Well, if we're on a battlefield, I'm gonna save. <laughs> Okay. Archdemon? Oh. Oh, the Reign of Arrows. This is where it happened. Oh, there's a Duncan's weapons then, right? Did Duncan take out an ogre? Is that who's, like, why there's swords in that one? I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure, like, Duncan had a badass moment with a with an. Oh, okay, look at my character's face. Oh, my character's face. <laughs> my my character just straight up being like, "What? Did Duncan have a moment with? Uh, I swear he did. Did he have a Did he have a moment with a?" Uh, With an ogre? I wonder. I don't have my... I kept having to put stuff on a hard drive for storage space because YouTube videos take up so much space. So I don't have access to it right now. I want to go and check and see if that... Uh, what happened with... Because I swear Duncan had like a cool moment. All right, I just went to check the actual video. Yes. This is the... This is the ogre that Duncan killed because Duncan saw that Kaelin was defeated and then he went and climbed up him by putting the the swords in there so this is the battlefield this is uh the exact same ogre with the swords in it that's so cool Alistair's <laughs> just like oh god not again not again oh god it's corpses okay don't worry, Alistair, we'll get you down from there. Hold on. We'll get you down, bud. Yes, I paralyzed him. Yes. This, imagine that, like this ogre. <laughs> imagine this fucking ogre, like <laughs> getting killed by a Grey Warden. Duncan just badass takes him out. Getting resurrected just to get taken the fuck out again by another Grey Warden. Um, oh, it's a necromancer. You've raised these enemies, have you? Of course you have. Does that mean he's gonna, oh, he's gonna keep bringing them up? Okay. Um, you there. Ah, oh, of course you've already used your overwhelm ability. Go! Go, my hound! Stun this guy for a sec. He is not stunned. Okay. I am ready. I'll get him. Me and me and him. Let's go. Nice. Yes, it did take out the corpses. Nice. In war, victory. Sick. I genuinely love that that's the exact same ogre. Does it have the weapons? It does. Duncan's sword and Duncan's dagger. Hell yes. And it's got three slots. Cool. So we're going to upgrade. And plus 10 damage versus dragons. All right. So I'll replace the edge with this one. So we got another slot. An engraving along the hilt reads in peace, vigilance, in war, victory, and in death, sacrifice. This plain and simple longsword, unornamented yet of the finest craftsmanship, brings back many memories of Duncan, your Grey Warden mentor. Well, I will be rocking the dagger on my character, and then the sword can be used by someone else. Alistair is probably going to use um, the sword that he's got at the moment. King Marek, what is it? King, King Marek's sword? Marek's blade? From, for like story reasons but also it would make sense for him to also be able to use Duncan's one all right Kaelin's helm a plume of royal purple extends from the golden helm when lowered the visor is clearly reminiscent of a crown when equipped in a set bonuses there uh, it is 
The last of them. Let us be on it our way. It has been a long day. By the lines around your eyes, I dare say you look as old as I. And if I may say so, milady, you appear to be getting younger by the day. Be careful who you flirt with, young man. <laughs> when you wake up beside me tomorrow morning, I'll be back to reminding you of your grandmother. Beside you? You heard what I said. It would not be the first time I woke to a younger man in my bed. Are all women this evil and conniving? <laughs> Just me, my dear. <laughs> Just me. Dude. <laughs> oh my god. Wynn and Old Biddy confirmed. Wynn and Flemeth both just, just doing that, doing that thing. They just living their best lives. Okay. Um, I guess we. All right, we're going back to. Oh yeah, we're on the bottom here. Oh, shit. All right, let's go back to. Like yeah, you should deal with the king's body. Make sure you have everything. Yeah, because like Alistair was saying, we will return. So I guess we'll go back to King's body now, and we can take him down from there. Alistair, are you all right? Oh, they left him here to rot. We need to do something. He is of royal blood and deserves a pyre. Bring him down and leave him to the wolves and he's dead and gone. Let the darkspawn have their fun. Oh my God. Well, there's really only one choice here if we want to be re respectful in any way. He was a good man who hoped too much and died too young. He deserves what little honor we can afford to grant him. A funeral part here it is then. Quest completed. Everyone approved. Everyone liked that. You returned to Ostagar, sated your thirst for revenge, discovered King, King Kaelin's broken body, and recovered his royal arms and armor from the clutches of the enemy. As for your memories of the fateful battle that claimed the lives of Kaelin, Duncan, and so many others, some things you tell yourself are best left behind. Uh, we will eventually be able to level up Alistair to wield that full armor set. But for now... We bring this episode of Dragon Age Origins to a close. We have returned to Ostagar. Uh, our party camp is apparently no more. Let's head back to it because we can leave from here, which is good. What's it like when we when we head back? Is there a camp to return to? Oh, never, never, never mind. Uh, the party camp is is here, so we're fine. Uh, oh, and Bowden's in the background there. Okay. Camp is still here, and now that we've spoken to characters and we're returning to the camp, we have some follow-up conversations. So we'll actually, we'll finalize this before we bring it to a close. There's a little bit more. I knew you weren't telling me something. I didn't feel like talking about it then. What happened to me? Maybe it will affect us, maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. Mmm. Hunted? What for? I was framed. Betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She Marjolaine. was my mentor and friend. She taught me the bardic arts, how to enchant with words and song, to carry myself like a highborn lady, to blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her and because I enjoyed what I did. How did she betray you? You can say it was my fault. There was a man I was sent to kill. I was to bring Marjolaine everything he carried. I don't know who this man was. She gave me a name and a description, and I hunted him down. I found documents on his body. Sealed documents. You opened them, didn't you? My curiosity got the better of me. 
Something told me that I needed to know what was in those letters. Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orlais to other countries, Nevara and Antiva among others. It was treason. Okay. Is this a bad thing? <laughs> so, it's just Orlais, isn't that what bards do? All of these options seem kind of like terrible. Isn't that what bards do? Some. But I had always assumed Marjolaine only operated within Orlais. This was an unhappy surprise for me. My life as Bard taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries, it takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. Did you give the documents to someone? To Marjolaine. No one else. I resealed them and gave them to her, as she had instructed. I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. I kept believing up till the moment they showed me the documents, altered by her hand to make me look the traitor. <sighs> Just like so many betrayals betrayed. What happened then? The Orlesian guards. They captured me. Did terrible things to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured. And at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. How did you get out? The skills Marjolaine taught me were good for something, at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolaine out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. So you came to Ferelden, to Lothering? I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. It's having you hear a threat to us. Thank you for trusting me with this. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. Damn. Her decision to join the Chantry was not merely the product of her disenchantment with the life of a bard. Liliana was framed by her bardmaster and fled to escape execution as a traitor. That's pretty sick. Got some win approval for that, for uh, for some for some reason. It's nice. Everything's still here. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. Literally, no mention of not being in the camp. I'm sure you'll be pleased. Okay. I mean, that's that's fine. Um, just literally no mention of um. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, we're just back here. Uh, nothing nothing bad happened at all. Cool. Well, <laughs> with that in mind, uh, and these guys, they're just still here as well. With that in mind, I'll now bring this episode of Dragon Age Origins to a close as we find ourselves back in our party camp uh, safe and sound. Next time, I believe it would be Brazilian outskirts time. We'll be going to the edge of the Brazilian forest uh, to have a chat with the elves, bring them the treaty before heading back eventually once that's all said and done to red cliff village um for the for the lands meet so thank you so much for joining me for this episode and i'll see you next time